Hello and welcome back to Heslip Tech Talk Live. Joel back with you. So happy to be here today and we are cooking with gas now, moving with all cylinders, moving forward here. A little behind, but you know, it's all good. I uh, hope everybody is doing well today. Joined with my brothers. Jeremy, would you like to introduce yourself to the audience? <laughs> Hey, Jeremy Heslop, uh, owner of OmniTech Pro. We are a uh, tech-based business on the East Coast, trying to help businesses get the best out of their technology to make it happen, and excited to be here. Yeah, Josh, you want to introduce yourself? Josh Heslop, I'm the middle of the Heslop brothers, and I uh, operate Joshua.net on the interwebs, as well as youtube.com slash Joshua14. <laughs> where I do gaming and tech reviews. Yes. Yes. So we got a smorgasbord of technology experience. Um, and I, as you guys may know from being subscribed to the channel, I do some technology reviews on mobile and uh, just all kinds of technology around the webs. Uh, and so we want to jump off with Asus is stepping up their game. They've kind of been quite a, uh, kind of quiet the last you know, year or so not doing too crazy stuff, but they have uh, a couple of announcements that are coming out that got me got me pretty pumped here. Um, so first of all, we have the Asus Zenfone 3, the Zoom edition. Um, that's only gonna be $330, so that'll be interesting. The things that I'm most excited about are they have a 5,000 milliamp battery for a 5.5 inch screen. So already that's gonna be Bonkers, nice, um, and so that's great. Uh, and uh, it's it's only uh, Snapdragon six twenty five, which is a little bit more of a budget processor, but that's what's in the new key one in the BlackBerry device, and it's still kicking. It's still a strong, high level performer, three gigs of RAM, so it's a little bit more budget oriented, mid level um, to higher level of the budget range. And um, but this can be in Amazon, Best Buy, Newegg. It's already available in some other places, but it looks really great, and it has a uh, 12 megapixel dual camera system, um, so that can help with a a bump in a 2.3x optical zoom, which I think is is pretty nice. Um, so it's going to help with uh, you know the wide angle and then the zoom lens. So I think this, this is a good showing from Asus here, and yeah, the Google Tango and stuff didn't didn't work out quite as well with with that. Google kind of throws things out there, but um, I'm excited for Asus to kind of step it up and have some different things. And with that, after right after announcing this to be available for the U.S., they uh, leaked some information on the Zenfone 4 Max and some other units. So there's the Zenfone 3 Max, Zenfone 4 Max, Zenfone Live, which I don't know anything about. Um, but they're interesting because... Asus has this weird uh, tie into empowering luxury, premier luxury, and ultimate luxury. The <laughs> ultimate luxury is going to be the Zenfone 4S. Uh, so <laughs> they, they're going for it here. And they continue like the budget to higher budget end because Snapdragon now is going to have a 630 and 660 chips, which are like they're more budget but high end budget, if that makes sense. And they're still going to have a 4,000 to 5,000 milliamp battery. Uh, with a, a headphone jack, so this will be nice to see. Um, you know, Zenfone AR, which is uh, Google Tango, the 4S, the 3 Deluxe. So they, I have you know a plethora of uh, devices here that are are coming out soon. And I mean, beside the weird naming construct and ultimate luxury, premier luxury. Uh, what do you guys think about Asus and their uh, their showings here? Didn't uh, what? Didn't you have a tablet that was Asus for a while, Joel? Uh, no, um, that was Lenovo, right? Yeah. You, uh, uh, Lenovo. you were in, be you were in between the tablets, like the Asus and the Lenovo. Which one you were gonna get, right? Yes. yes. Yeah, Asus has been getting putting out some solid tablets, um, good mid range, solid ones. The um, they have some good two K little tablets, you know, eight to ten inch range. Um, so they've been putting out some good tablets. Their phones just haven't got as big of a, a wide release, which is fine. Um, but I'm pretty sure they're they're crushing it overseas, though. So you know. Yeah, yeah, they're doing well, and and you know they're 
their laptops, they still, they have a bunch of budget laptops that do really well and a couple other devices there. So, you know, they're, they're definitely not hurting. It's just, I think they're trying to make more of a mark in the, uh, in the cell phone game, which, you know, it's a crowded, very crowded game. So we'll see what comes out of that, but, but it's looking good for them. I mean, especially I love that they're doing like a little more low power devices that have crazy battery. Cause if you really ask like a consumer, uh, you know, you have the top tier people like us that are going to want the best uh, processor, the best, the fastest, whatever, but like normal people just want long battery life and a solid device. And so if they can, do that and give that to the people and especially things like the zoom that has you know a better lenses and dual system i think they could really make a, a nice impact here but i'm uh, moving right along speaking of uh some laptops and some can cp uh, computer stuff josh what does microsoft have going on right now with microsoft built well they just uh had their builds uh events here uh just yesterday um, well, they're doing day two, um, so I think it's like a three-day deal. But um, here are the top seven announcements uh, from WindowsCentral.com. And uh, basically, a couple of ones that I was really excited for is obviously they're calling Redstone 3 the fall creators update. And we've already know it's the creators update, but uh, I guess they're going to be doing more, uh, more upgrades. Um, they're doing a new design language called the Fluent Fluent Design System, Ooh. previously called Project Neon. So, like you were able to see some of their neon esh uh, like material design kind of stuff for um, Groove Music. Uh, this one is actually really cool. The Windows Story Remix. So they basically took Windows Movie Maker and overhauled it, and you can actually take 3D models and put it into your footage. And you can actually um, change people's models that they upload to the store and re they call it remixing. Um, and it has a bunch of uh, music stuff like uh, like GarageBand does for iMovie and stuff like that. Um, so it's going to be actually really cool to have something that's competitive to iMovie. Um, Finally. Stuff like that. And they said it's all going to be uh, really seamless with the cloud and like you can pick up where you left off on your tablet or home computer and all that kind of stuff. So, um, so cloud clipboards, timelines and files on demand, um, lots of OneDrive kind of stuff. Uh, iTunes on the windows store. Uh -huh. I think this is because of uh, windows 10 S. Um, uh. So they're saying a lot of students have iTunes and they want them to be able to uh, use that on their new surface laptop. Uh, and obviously, they're reaching out to to iOS developers and saying, "Hey, we've got an SDK, man. You can just port your stuff right over. No big deal." And uh, one last thing that I'm excited for is uh, their mixed reality uh, offerings for very cheap. So, yeah. Acer's uh, headset is only going to be two ninety nine, and they have uh, some sweet uh, controllers uh, with a bundle that's going to be like three ninety nine. Wow. So I'm actually uh, hoping that that's is going to be just as good as or almost as good as a like a vive or a an oculus kind of thing i'm definitely going to get one and uh test it out so yeah um, a pretty good getting getting a really super good virtual reality under 500 dollars is going to be huge for the market i think like i mean virtual reality has made a lot of steps and strides but right now it's still you know if you want to get the vive it's it's Seven hundred, eight hundred dollars, depending on if it's on sale and stuff right now, and yep. uh, that's hard for like a normal person to pump that out after paying for a PC. You have to pay for probably a thousand dollar plus PC to be able to run it to begin with, right? Um, on you know higher settings, so uh, getting it, you know, being able to pick up a thousand dollar PC and then this, that's not as crazy as you know two thousand plus dollars to get a good system to run it. I like that. No doubt, no doubt. So, and they just went on. Uh, TechCrunch also has a uh, in depth in depth look uh, in addition to the video on their um, Windows Story re Remix. So, uh, some pretty cool stuff there. Uh, I'll throw the link um, to you, Joel, and then you can throw it in the description if you want. 
cool for the so, uh, for the peeps to check out. Nice. Well, cool. So uh, go ahead. Jerry. I was just gonna say, I think they released Visual Studio on the Mac as well, so you could do some uh, Windows coding from the Mac and do cross-platform stuff. So nice. Well, Windows Central doesn't care about that, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> no, they should. I know, cool right? Stuff coming, coming across both sides. Exactly. Speaking of innovations, uh, Elon Musk has been all over the news lately with uh, a TED Talk and then talking about his boring company and all kinds of craziness. He always has something. <laughs> uh, the newest thing that they talked about this week, uh, Jeremy, why don't you, as our resident Tesla expert, why don't you tell us? <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm the expert on Tesla, but I'm definitely a fan um, and follow uh, follow a bunch of the stuff that Musk brings along and and others. So we finally have found out how much the new solar roof is going to be costing from the Tesla factory. Um, unless you've been under a rock uh, and haven't been following any any of the stuff that Elon's been putting out or Tesla. Um, they ha kind of have a trifecta of uh, uh, hitting the home, hitting the hitting the car, and hitting, um, uh, I guess, the the battery side of things. So the roof is part of that that strategy, and um, it's coming out to be twenty one eighty per square foot, which um, estimated is uh, pretty close to around there. And um, I guess they're saying that you can make a solar roof without all solar tiles so it kind of brings it can, you can offset the the, the cost of that yeah and so you don't have to have all solar but um uh, joel i think you were saying earlier that uh to elon had on his uh instagram a video of them blasting um the solar panels um that are the tiles and with a hail simulator or something like that and they were up withstanding a lot of damage so not only are you getting a really strong roof um he demonstrated on screen when he first announced them. You know them dropping stuff like bowling balls and things on these tiles, and they didn't they didn't shatter at like uh, a regular like uh, wood or some different specialty shingles and stuff. So uh, it's pretty exciting um, that you know it's not super cheap. Um, you know if you have a three thousand square foot roof, you're going to be paying sixty five thousand plus the power wall that you need to get all that energy. Uh, but they do have tax credits from the feds, and depending on which um, uh, state you're in, they have certain tax credits and things that you'll get back. Plus, the cost of uh, most solar panels, even um, just standard ones, usually pay themselves off between five to seven years because you're putting the energy back into uh, the electricity back into the grid system um, and getting uh, credits from the, uh, the the electric company as well. So uh, it's yeah, it's pretty pretty cool stuff and. Um, there's a cool uh, solar roof calculator from Tesla that you can go and say, here's how much space I have on my roof, and and uh, pick your tiles and uh, they're not messing and get around. started with things. So no, so there's some cool graphics that are on there about. Um, there's the hail cannon. Yeah, there's the hail cannon. <laughs> pew pew pew. Yeah. So I mean, these aren't regular. I mean, these are like uh, yeah. um, slate and. Uh, the other kind of tiles. So, um, you know, compared to those, it's going to be a little bit hardier. But your your standard uh, roofing um, is probably going to hold up to hail a little bit better than than a mosaic tiles <laughs> or the uh, those kinds of slate or uh, Tuscan looking ones. Mm -hmm. So it's it's cool. It's neat. Um, being off grid is nice because that's what the power wall will allow you to to kind of integrate into that. That's really good. So when the power goes out, you still keep going. Yeah. So that's the, the uh, something that I'm interested in. Comparison, and I don't know enough about solar power to know how much in comparison these are to doing like a normal solar power panels on top of your normal tiles, you know, instead of really Yeah, you're gonna pay almost that same amount. I mean and so instead of maybe sixty, you're paying for you're paying fifty. Uh -huh. And then you get an inverter and you're not off the grid. You're um uh you're you're on grid and putting energy back in. Um, and so if the power goes out, your power's out. Whereas I think with the, the Tesla system um, and their power wall, you're actually gonna get off grid. So it allows you to continue to have uninterrupted electricity as long as that battery's charged. That's pretty cool. So that's kind of the, 
that's kind of the benefit of the Powerwall, even if you had the solar panels anyway, is the fact that you can go off grid and, and it's almost like a UPS battery for your computer. <laughs> you know, it keeps it on for that 10, 15 minutes while the, the battery's out. But this, this Powerwall could theoretically run um, all your base home lights and your core uh, stuff like your heating and air for a couple hours. So it's great. It's pretty cool. I, yeah. I can imagine that they're working on efficiency of it. That it, it, I don't, I don't know this for a fact, but I'm, I'm sure they've done crazy amount of research on the efficiency of the solar technology, and I, I gotta imagine that it's just as efficient or more efficient than what's offered right now in, uh, in panel. So, so yeah, I mean, they, they have. I mean, it's the technology is getting better and better, so I'm sure they're using um, some of the better stuff, and um, you know. Uh, the interesting thing is they can be, they can put the solar panels in the places that the sun is going to affect the most. So I think the southern facing is what they usually try to get for solar panels, and uh, because it goes from east to west in the way that we're in the northern hemisphere, um, the sun's going to be the home most. So you're probably going to put most of your solar panels on those sides of the house, the southern side wrapped around to the east and the west more, um, you know, or if you're having overhang of some trees on the side of your house, you don't need to get those pan the solar panels there. You can just get the, the glass lookalikes. Um, so it's pretty cool stuff. That's pretty cool. 30 year uh, warranty. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, for I mean, that's your standard roof, but, but for the power side, that's even better. Yeah. I mean, for battery and, and everything else that's huge it's gonna but be huge. the the tiles are are warranty for infinity or the lifetime of your house whichever comes first oh, oh. nice well oh, that's so, i'm sold <laughs> so, um well uh if you are the type of person that has been holding on for things of the past and and oh, you just oh. golly, you can't get over the fact that you can't have a note seven you could be in luck <laughs> live in South Korea. So what's happening is they are releasing a, a new version, quote unquote, air quotes, of the Galaxy Note called the 7R, which just means seven refurbished, basically. And they are <laughs> purposing the Note 7 uh, with a slightly smaller battery. Instead of 3,500, they're doing 3,200 with a lot more fail safes in it. Uh, they're like, it's not going to explode. We promise. Um, and uh, I absolutely love this. The Note 7 is the best phone of last year, I think. And uh, it'd be crazy if they can get it up and running and going. But this is the incredible part is that it's around 260 bucks cheaper than it was originally at launch. So if somehow people, I guarantee people are going to be importing these or doing something to get them to work here. Um, because at... 620 bucks is a, a lot cheaper than, you know, close to a thousand that it was when it launched. Um, so we'll see. They, it says 300,000 units. So only in South Korea, but you know, there's, there's going to be a few people here in the United States or Europe that are somehow going to get a hold of them and run them because they're holding on. I've done that feeling, you know, running there, the one in the note seven. I, I love it. Um, I kind of liked it better than the actual, um, than the S8. I, I like the S8 and I think it's a great device, but that's almost too much edge for me. Like when I went and used it, I, since I've used it, it's like, it, it's hard because it's, it's so tiny in your hands this way because um, the thin aspect ratio, which is great for a lot of people, but I have big hands and I like the 16 by nine. And uh, the Note 7 was was probably my favorite feeling device in the hand that I've used um, out of any device really so far. The curves was just perfect. The 7 Edge was a little too pointy, but the Note 7 had it perfect, I thought, on it. And like I said, S8 still feels great, still good for a lot of people, but um, I like the Note 7 a lot. So we'll see uh, if this will actually impact anybody or be a big deal. What do you guys think about that? That ship is assailed. Uh, <laughs> I think that if, I mean, because the S8 and S8 Plus are selling really well. Um, I mean, you're gonna you're gonna be able to get. I'm sorry. They're selling, you know, like only in their own country. So yeah, so you're gonna have to import it. You're not gonna get any kind of support. Uh, 
I mean, maybe from Samsung, but they're gonna be like, whatever. I mean, right? But we'll see. I mean, we'll see. I mean, I I think this might just be the first step because who knows how much um, inventory they're sitting on, right? So right. as fast as they can pump out the the new batteries in these with the fail safes, I think they're gonna want to um, regain a little of that. The, what billion failure or whatever they said how many millions of dollars they lost from from this so I mean if they if they trial it in Korea and they're successful I can see I can see them doing this in the rest of the world again you know between your legs but you're going to get some money back if you can get these units out you know with a smaller battery so um, I can see them put it in, and there's those people that still want the stylus and like Joel said you know that it fits better in the hand for some people. So I, I don't think it's a bad move. I think if they can save a little bit of face by resetting and saying, look, we screwed up, we're, we're fixing it. Um, I say go for it, Samsung. Make yeah, it they're, <laughs> they're going to recruit somebody on it. And that, that'll, that, that's good for them. They're, they're making hand over fist now with the S8 and S8 Plus. But, you know, there are people that are going to buy it. I mean, someone in the comments already said they would buy it. And um, yep. Josh, you really liked the stylus on it. It was a lot better, right? You, Josh had it for a while before it got recalled. Um, yes. So, I, uh, I mean, it, it is a great. It's it was a great phone. I had it for you know three four weeks and loved it. So uh, obviously that that camera is super good. The the form factor and the stylus and all the features. So. I mean, I, I got all the features minus the stylus with the S7 Edge because they basically updated all the features, uh, I think, except for the the uh, GIF maker. Um, but, uh, you know, that's I can make GIFs with other apps. It's not a big deal. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I want to see what their the next hardware is going to come out with because, I mean, like, they obviously... Um, the S... S8 always is a lot of some innovation, and then the the Note 8 always pushes it even further. So, yeah, you know, that that could be if, if they if they do all what they need to do, I can I would look at, at doing that for my next device um, as well. Um, I, I love the Note series; it'd be great. I mean, Josh, those three to four weeks that you had the Note 7, your gift game was it was on point. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know, right? I know. Got it, and like, Right, right. Well, thankfully, uh, I use an app called Textra, and they have give support in there. You can just search for gifts super quick, and it's just like, bam. So you don't have to make your own. I had a friend that uses the Note Five, and. Um, yeah, the, the, the Note 5 was great as well. Um, it had a smaller battery and it had a couple little things that were off on it. Um, but it was still a, a great device as well. Um, so, yeah, I'm super excited for the the Note 8. And especially, you know, that Samsung's pushing the edge with those displays. So we'll, who knows what they'll do. I, I'm hoping that it's a, a, a dual camera Note 8. And what's, that's what I'm thinking. It just makes a lot of sense for them to do that. Um, because Note's always been pushing the edge of cameras. The Note 7 had the same sensor as the 7, um, so that wasn't really pushing too much, but most of the cameras before that always were pushing forward. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see there. Oh, you gave your wife the Note 5 and got the V20. Nice. Um, but Josh, what, what, what events do you have coming up here that's uh, pretty exciting? Uh, your yes. Um, down yonder. So down here in Houston, we've got a comic convention called a comic a palooza. And uh, I was fortunate enough to uh, reach out to them and they accepted my media credentials offer. So uh, I'm going to be going tomorrow as well as uh, hopefully some on Saturday as well. Uh, but they're going to be doing gaming tournaments and, um, and so if you do get a ticket, uh, you'll be able to go play games or uh, sign up to uh, – they've got a League of Legends tournament, Overwatch, uh, Rocket League. And then on the console side, uh, they also have Street Fighter Five, Street Fighter. Marvel, Marvel vs. Capcom, and Killer Instinct and Super Somewhere Smash, uh, and Street Fighter on Wii U as well. So – 
Um, but the big uh, the big draw for everyone is Chuck, Chuck Norris. Norris is be there. <laughs> nice. So uh, and so and Iron Fist. Iron Fist is going to be there. Uh, John Bernthal from Punisher. Yeah. And, uh, your devil, so. Yeah, some people from and Felicia Day is going to be there too. Oh yeah, um, nice. So yeah, plus obviously a bunch of uh, crazy cosplay and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to do probably a couple of videos, one on the gaming side and one on the floor side, and see uh, what's what's going on. But uh, it goes on all weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, and I think passes if you want to go. Uh, VIP is two seventy five, but uh, if you want to just go for one day. It's thirty-five, forty, or thirty, so um, it's not bad. And kids from six to twelve are ten bucks. Kids under five are free. So uh, yeah, if my wife makes me go take the kids on Saturday, I can take them for free. Woo! <laughs> but uh, I may uh, I do what's in my bag if anybody wants to know. Um, so. Uh, What's what it sounds like is we're dealing with enough. We'll see what happens, like, but uh, uh, oh, sorry, I'm, I'm all over the place. Okay. <laughs> cool. Uh, well, speaking of being all over the place, uh, so, it's a surprising so, so what stock market today. Jeremy, what are some of the recent releases that have gotten people like freaking out a little bit on the stock market? Yeah, well, our good friends at Snap Inc. They snap their neck here. I don't know if you can kind of see that little downward <laughs> uh, hey one day, one day like uh, five dollar drop in their stock price, which made their market cap go down by uh, a lot, <laughs> um, and uh, it's still trending down even today. So um, there's a little bit of. Uh, uh, people scrambling around the people that were on the snap um, bandwagon, but essentially uh, I like I like Gizmodo's um, uh, Their title here. It's a snapchat debuts new disappearing stock price. You know their their messages disappear. So does their stock um, So, you know that uh, I always knew from the very beginning their IPO was gonna be tough to keep um, going and keep it um, uh, Top revenues because once you go IPO you can't really lose money a lot of uh, months. I mean look at Apple they lost like 1% from uh, last year, last quarter, and their their stock price went down and people are like, sell Apple, sell Apple, you know. So um, burn rate of Snap is pretty high and it's starting to show. They're, as soon as their um, uh, users start to drop a little bit year over year, it's gonna be, I think it's gonna be game over. It's just gonna um, start slowing down, just like Twitter. So unless they can do some, um, a little bit of tweaking on, on their offerings and how they're doing ads or how they're having stuff interacting, uh, who knows? Who knows what we'll see? I mean, um, twenty-five percent in after-hours trading, and then it went down to here at Sand showing twenty-nine dollars, but now it's down to eighteen. So, uh, pretty crazy. So they're saying uh, in in one quarter it costs them whatever ten million dollars or one hundred forty-nine dollars in a quarter to run the company. So. It's a lot to keep going on, on not a very strong business model. Yeah, that's that's pretty bonkers. Um, we'll see how they do in the long run here, if that's going to be stable. I, I, Instagram it, it has been stepping their game up. Zuckerberg is putting his fingers all in the stories and the Snapchat yeah. features. And I think Snapchat is taking a hit on that because whereas yeah. – Teenagers and college use Snapchat hard. Um, Instagram's a bigger umbrella that gets more people. And now that it's more integrated with Facebook, you have a lot of families using it and stuff like that. So um, they're definitely uh, I heard you talk to somebody in the one market, market, market there. And we'll see yep. if Snapchat can recover from that and make some innovations because they're, they're not really doing anything new. Um, so we'll see if they do it. Um, but well, speaking of, of innovations and moving, uh, Xiaomi, which has done really moved up their game, they're a uh, Chinese based company, but they just opened up a uh, company, a launch 
in North America and Mexico. And so uh, their company, which was last valued at $45 billion, um, opened up a uh, factory in Mexico. And so this is a big deal because Xiaomi has primarily been an Asian market, whereas now it looks like they're trying to move towards a United States launch of some of their phones. So we'll see how this affects the market. They've been a underdog really stepping up and catching up to, to phone companies like Huawei and Oppo um, and, and really, really do a big deal. It's, uh, they're obviously their strongest in China, but they really want to bring that out to the next direction to different markets. So this could be a pretty big deal there. They've done a really uh, good job with a lot of their tab tablets and phablets, the bigger devices. Um, but the, the Xiaomi Mi Mix that Marquez did a video on a while back with those like um, no side oh, yeah. bezels that just had a bottom bezel, that got a big attention. But once again, that was only available in, in Asian markets and not here. So people are trying to import it and use it on T-Mobile and stuff. So um, this type of move is just gonna great, create even more, uh, you know, even more of a market for Android it's a really step up the game. And, and if companies like HTC and some of these other so-called big market companies don't do anything with their big next releases, they're going to start getting pushed out. Huawei's coming in so strong right now uh, with the P10, the Mate 9, and some of their other devices, the Honor 6X, and uh, they're hitting it real hard. And now Xiaomi's making a move on North America and some US losses uh, launches. So uh, I'm excited to see uh, this next this year of of things here because um, man, there there's a lot of new markets that are coming in out of nowhere. Um, you have people all over the place making new smartphones. So the the normal Samsung, Apple, HTC, are and you know LG are kind of getting pushed to the side a little bit when you have so many good budget options. Um, I have three budget phones that I'm using right now, and they're awesome. They're great. And uh, it's cool to see now. It's almost hard for me to suggest someone buying a eight hundred to a thousand dollar phone off contract if they can't get one cheaper for contract when they can buy a phone for two hundred bucks to three hundred bucks. That's awesome. Um, that's really really great. So really hard to to as much as I love covering you know, the V twenty, the G six, the S eight. When you see some of these budget phones that, for all intents and purposes, do a lot of great things um you know there's only some minor little setbacks it, it's a, it's a cool thing to see when the level of budget phone to flagship isn't that that far anymore we really saw it first i think with one plus uh, moving up in the ranks and flagship killer and they had all this crazy uh you know um hidden veiled things to make it such a big deal and hype it up with the uh you know request system but now it's just the normal thing to have these budget phones just be crushing it. What do you guys think uh, about about the budget range and Xiaomi making this move? I think it's a really strategic move, uh, very smart, it's and uh, hopefully that'll make the prices in the U.S. go down because they don't yeah. have to ship it that far. Um, yeah. So uh, yeah, if they get the right price point and features. Uh, they're going to give Motorola, and Lenovo a run for the money on the G, um, all that kind of stuff. So, I think they need to have a have a Yaomei and um, Yahweh battle. <laughs> Pronounce the name the the most. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. But I, I, yeah, I mean these these low, and I don't know if you can call them budget phones anymore, other than the, the cost, right? Because the feature sets are becoming so on par with some of the flagships even, you know, and with the cost of components, um, you know, I mean, the, the chipsets that are out there and the amount of RAM, you know, they're all basically becoming the same. And with so many um, Android heads, handsets trying to get at them, it's just going to make those prices go down further and further. So it's going to be harder and harder to differentiate the flagship phones. You know, it's going to be starting to be gimmicky and you're just going to have all these like, you know, the, the, Samsung uh, Galaxy S7 days, you know, those type range phones being the standard on, you know, yeah. and that's a, that's a, that was the flagship phone a year ago, you know? Yeah. yeah. So. Well, I mean, honestly, think about the S8, like what's the best thing about it? 
the display. I mean, uh, uh, the camera's yeah. still good, but it's the same sensor as last year. Still waterproof. Yeah. Still a crappy speaker on the bottom. You know, there's nothing like crazy. The chipset's not really. I mean, it's A35, but the, the A21, it's marginally faster. It's not like twice as fast. Whatever. Um, so the 820 chip is going to be a budget chip now, and it's that's what's in my uh, you know LG V20. Still kicking fast. So uh, it, it's it's exciting to see these other companies that can do crazy things. And three gigs of RAM is considered the budget build now, when four gigs is the norm on Android phones, flagships. I mean, and three gigs is plenty enough for most things. Um, so crazy. I, I'm, it's fun to see. It, it, it's uh, great that everybody now has a bigger option. It's not just either get a Samsung Galaxy phone or you get an iPhone. That was like, you know, two, three years ago, that was when the Galaxy S6 and, you know, the iPhone 5 and 6 were out. Those were your options for like quality phones. And then there was a bunch of outlanders out there. Um, but now the world is our oyster with uh, Android devices. And who knows, Jeremy? Android. I was going to well, Jeremy, do you think that? Apple's finally going to do a, a third device, not just an iPhone 7S and a 7S Plus, but do you think they're going to do um, like an SE version of the 7? I think there's a big possibility that they're going to come out with a Pro line. They'll have like the 7S, 7S Plus, and then a Pro, um, whether they call it a 7 Pro or their iPhone Pro or something like that, that's a little bit bigger. Um, and one of the reasons I think so, and there's some speculation there, is that they're coming out with a third screened iPad is the latest rumor. So they have their 12 inch, they have their like 9.7, and now they're gonna come out with like a 10.5 or something. So they're gonna have like your little, you know, your not your mini mini, but your iPad Pros. You'll have your nine, your 10, and your 12 um, to kind of give people options. And if they're gonna do that with the iPad Pro, they're probably gonna have those with the iPhone as well. At least that's my that's my speculation. I haven't seen any. There hasn't. Most of the rumors for the iPhone are two screen, but uh -huh. I personally think they're going to keep both the Plus and the the standard sizes, just because they have the screens, and then they'll come out with the Pro with the AMOLED, um, with Jeez. the with the touch with the touch through the screen potentially. The, the, the rumoring and some other things. So we'll see. I mean, it'll keep pushing the um, the the larger Android manufacturers forward a little bit and get them thinking. Hopefully, they're, they're, uh, we'll take some risks on this on this version, being at their 10th anniversary. Um, well, they've been kind of being followers since the first couple iPhones. But. Yeah, and I'm excited for that the AMOLED from either Samsung or LG because I prefer – I really like AMOLED screens. Um, yeah, the blacks are just a lot better. Super brighter. good iPhone. Um, but can we all agree that – their naming scheme for the new iPads are just stupid. Same thing with the MacBooks. MacBook. <laughs> they had MacBook before that, and then they had MacBook Pro. Yeah. And then now they have the new iPad, which is the actual budget iPad, the $300, the 299 iPad um, is called the new iPad. And then the Pro. And, and then the, the iPad and the iPad Pro are the same size, except the Pro is can use the pen and has the keyboard. Yeah. That's the only difference, you know. It's like, just get rid of the old iPad, make them all pro, you know, <laughs> and then just take the pro name off, or just use it for the big one. I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm sure Steve Jobs is rolling around his grave a little bit with all the the craziness that's going on. But I mean, you know, at some point you're going to have to have more options, right? I mean, they started with one phone, and today people want, you know, their gold iPhone or their cherry, cherry pink. It's rose green. gold. Rose, rose gold. gold. Pink, <laughs> pinky pie. Uh, yeah. but, um, but I mean, speaking, going a little bit back to kind of choice and, and um, budget phones with Android, um, Google is re redoing a new operating system. Not on the they're doing Android without Linux. Ooh. Is what I read. So they're building their own new operating system. So that could be interesting in the fact that the if it's going to run on ARM, which I think it, it will. Um, it's when you when you go away from the Linux kernel, which is kind of huge and monolithic, even on an embedded system, um, you have a lot more control over very specific things, and you can tweak things very well and get way more battery life out of 
um, things. That's why a lot of the router manufacturers went from Linux to building their own because they were able to use smaller embedded chips and um, use less power than with Linux. Even though Linux is more powerful and you know you can run the world and web websites and all kinds of stuff. I'm assuming that would help with with them with fragmentation that Google can standardize it a little bit more. You think? If they if they open source it, um, it won't matter. I mean, the fact that people can build their own stuff on top is still going to be a part of that, unless they don't open source this one or they make a a special um, uh, open source license that re, uh, has the standard, like keeps the keeps the Android look and feel or the standard apps for certain things. But you're, you're going to have Samsung that's going to want to have their yeah. fingerprint on everything. <laughs> Fine line of Android that I love and hate. I love that you can do the customization. I love that there's so many different options of phones. But then you're like, Samsung, why are you crushing your battery life with this stupid feature? Why, you know, why is there a big C on the button? Like those things where you're scratching your head, like you have so many options, so much customization, and you did this with the phone. So um, you know, I, moving forward with, with five and material design, that's helped with some of the things with Google because they've they put down more lines that this is a hard line for this. And so I'm glad that they did that. I mean, obviously I want to be open, but they did cut this. Okay, you have to do this. You have, so they've cut a little bit of lines with manufacturers, which helped with five and plus now um, onto Nougat and uh, Marshmallow. So um, yeah, I think it's in a good place and moving forward. Yeah. That's, I didn't hear that. So uh, I'm sure that's an undertaking and that won't be anytime soon, but who knows? They might. I guess they'll talk about that in the new developer. That's later this year, September, I guess, um, for Google I/O. Yeah. Um, what were they calling it? There was an interesting name, so you guys can look for it. Um, Fuchsia. Oh, yeah, I did. Google's that. mysterious new operating system, Fuchsia, may soon be unveiled. And from what they were talking about, it was not going to be Linux-based. Um, well, and it's it's not fuchsia uh, less armadillo. You can't eat a fuchsia, so I don't know why they're calling it that. <laughs> oh, it's totally new operating system, so it's not going to be um, not going to be Android. Nice. Well, the last thing I want to tell you guys about is that uh, Joshua over on his channel has a giveaway going with eight hours left. It ends tonight, uh, so you don't have much time left to enter. But if you're watching this live or the rest, you know, sometime today, go ahead. There's a link down below. Uh, I O. Uh, and you, know, you subscribe to his channel and some socials and stuff like that. Channel as well. And you can get some good entries into that. Giving away some really cool blue LED speakers. You set up with your Xbox or your TV. Or, um, there's some. Sound pretty good cool on the video. He's got a review as well um, that you can check out. So, that's jam like free stuff. Uh, go check that out. Josh, what I say about that more? The link is in the description of this video. And if you also go to my channel, you'll see the uh, review as well. But, uh, I'm, I'm pumped to give it away. And uh, I will probably be shipping it out on. Uh, Saturday or Monday, depending on my schedule. But uh, we'll definitely announce the winner uh, tomorrow morning uh, on Twitter and on YouTube and on Facebook as well. So uh, hopefully, uh, may the best person win. And uh, <laughs> if you're looking out, you might have some. Or do you think I'm not. I'm not sure, but I, whatever those guys are talking about is riveting, and my dogs are going crazy. So, uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> but, uh, if you'd like to tell people about there. Jeremy, do you want to talk about anything? Oh, you're breaking up a little bit there. Um, yeah. So we're going to be. Uh, uh, there's a bunch of security stuff going on in the news and things, so we'll probably be doing a, an update on our YouTube channel and our blog is about um, some stuff happening. So be looking out for that. Subscribe on our webpage, omnitechpro.com, to our newsletter, and we'll get it out to you. Or if you just watch, subscribe to our channel. And that's it. Awesome.
Well, great. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Got some fun announcements coming up real soon. I've uh, got some more videos in the video book to pump out here in the next uh, week or so. Thank you guys so much for watching, chatting along, talking, asking some questions in the uh, uh, just chat below. And make sure that you leave a comment down below what types of things you want us to talk about in the future. Love talking tech with my brothers. But you guys, this has been a blast. I hope you all have an incredible day. Uh, you'll check so much for watching. But as always.